Hello fellow space engineers, GopeScope here from the GopeScope Gaming Channel, and today I'd like to take you through the process of installing an automated airlock on the new broadcasting station that I'm building. Now I don't make enough money to hire the building of this station, so I've got to do it myself, but my good friends at Arclight Drive Yards were kind enough to let me watch their engineers build one of their airlocks. So without further ado, let's build an airlock. Okay, well I've just made it to the work site. As you can see, we already have some construction underway. I've already built some of the, the basic necessities, a little defense against uh, asteroids and some work lights, and uh, we started on a, a basic platform. And I have to apologize uh, for the, the quality of audio. It's a little difficult with the, the helmet mic to get as, as good of good audio as we can in the broadcasting center, so bear with me on that. And uh, as we come down here, you can see I've actually kind of started to build some of the airlock already. Now, I haven't done any of the... Uh, the more tricky things, which the uh, the ArcLight Drive Yards engineers helped me with, um, which is actually programming the sensors and timing blocks that make this whole airlock system possible. So just to do a quick run through of what I already built, just to save some time, because it's not fun to watch people just welding blocks. I don't think. Um, no judgment though, if you enjoy doing that, that's that is just fine. Uh, basically, we've just got a sealed area here. You can see we use light armor blocks. You can use whatever materials make a seal that you want though. So the main purpose of this, like the name indicates, is just to lock the air inside, however you want to do that. So we have a door at one end, a door at the other. I also call them hatches, so you'll see it's called hatch. And uh, there's also a, a vent that's going to be pressurizing and depressurizing this area. In addition to that, we have a sensor that's associated with each, each door, and the sensors will each activate a different timer. And then we have four timers. So, uh, and then also the oxygen storage and generation equipment that is linked up to the vent. So this, this kind of basic hands-off or hands-free automated airlock system, um, you need two doors, two sensors, four timers, and then uh, whatever materials you want to use to create the, the surround, and then, and then also the oxygen, and, oxygen storage and generation system. So... Uh, to get into how this, this uh, programming actually works, the first thing we can do is come up here to this sensor. We have the outer airlock hatch sensor, and what we want to do is have this trigger timer 1. So that's going to start timer 1. And then our inner airlock hatch sensor, which is back here, this is going to trigger timer 3. So timer 1 in the other one, and timer 3 in this one at the rear. All right, and we're also going to adjust these settings a little bit. So the, the main thing is that the back setting, so behind or straight ahead from where we're looking or behind the sensor, needs to be uh, far enough back so that it's through the block so you can trigger it, but not so far back that you're, uh, you're triggering it, I guess, too early if you don't want to trigger it. So we're going to put this at 4, and we'll do the outer airlock hatch sensor also at 4. Now that we have that set up, and of course they're set to detect players. That's the uh, the purpose of this airlock is letting players in and out. You can have larger ones with hangar doors letting ships in or out, but we're just dealing with individuals walking through these. So now here's the magic. We've got four timing blocks. So here's timer one. We want this to be no delay. And we are going to, remember this is what uh, is triggered when you walk up to that sensor on the outer airlock hatch. So the first thing it's going to do is to close the inner airlock hatch. So here's our inner airlock hatch. We don't want open-close, we want just closed. Uh, it's important not to do open-close or pressurize on slash off um, when we're programming these because you could be coming in and out from different directions or maybe if you're with another person, um, you could come in and then they could come in next. And if you have it on that open, close, or depressurize on off kind of setting, things can get out of sync. So um, we want to do just close. So that's going to make sure that your inner door is closed. Whether it's already closed or open, it will be closed before the next thing happens, which is depressurizing the airlock. So if it's not closed, you're going to depressurize everything that's behind it, your whole ship or station or, or whatever. So we want to depressurize on after we close this hatch. And then we're going to start timer two. We're going to start timer two, and then we're going to turn on timer three. And now, that's not start timer three, we're going to turn on timer three. And we'll get to get to this in a little bit, why, why timer three would be off. 
We're going to go into timer 2 then to program what that does. Now timer 2 is basically what governs the length of time between closing the inner door, starting depressurizing, and when the outer door opens. So if you have a larger airlock, you might need a, a longer delay on that. You might need more time for the vent to de depressurize, to suck all the air out before you open the door. That's something you can play with. It's going to vary depending on the volume you're trying to depressurize or repressurize and the number of vents that you have doing that work. So if you're actually in the airlock trying to do this, um, you can see when you test it, if, if uh, oxygen is flying out, you're going to need to increase the delay to give it more time to depressurize. Um, and if it's if it's not, it might look like you know all the all the uh, indicators are solid green for quite some time uh, before one of the doors closes, and then that might indicate you've got it uh, set longer than it needs to. So for our purposes, this is a, a fairly small area, and about three seconds would be enough time to repressurize or depressurize. So three second delay. Then we're going to set up actions here. We're going to open the outer door. So after three seconds after closing the inner door and beginning to depressurize, we're going to open the outer door. Open. And then we are going to turn off timing block one. So basically, uh, timing block one is triggered by the sensor. It runs through what it's programmed to do and starts timing block two. And when timing block two gets the end of its list of things to do, it will turn off timing block one so that the next time you walk under that sensor the sensor will trip but the timing block that it triggers is off so it will do nothing and that's important so that things stay in sync um, no matter what way you're going in and out so now we've got timing block two uh, all set up we're going to do timing block three this is also no delay and this is what's triggered uh, by the inner airlock so kind of similar to what we did in the outer one we're going to close the outer door this time though Outer airlock hatch is going to close. And then we are going to turn depressurizing off. Depressurize off, which is to say we're going to pressurize. And then we're going to start timer four. And then we're going to turn off timer three. I'm sorry, we're going to turn on, start timer four, turn on timer one. Turn on timer one. So. Um, when we when we went through the other way, we we triggered timer one, which did its thing, then triggered timer two, and in tr timer two's programming, timer one was turned off. Now when we go through this sensor, it does its whole list of things to do, and then turns on timer one. So now that we have that finished, we can go into timer four, and this had no delay. This is going to have about three seconds again. And what it's going to do is open the inner door. Inner door open. And then it's going to turn off timer 3. So timer uh, timer 1 gets turned off um, by timer 2. Timer 3 gets turned off by timer 4. And then if we go back and we look at, like for example, timer 1, uh, timer 1 will turn on timer 3, and timer 3 We'll turn on timer one. Okay, so now we have that programmed and we have these all linked up. Let's see if we have this working. So we triggered the sensor, and after a short delay, this should open. Okay, and see we saw we saw oxygen venting, so we didn't give it enough time, but that did work as far as the the door is working. So let's back up. Now we've triggered this, so that closed. This is venting, and that opens, and we're out. And now one possibility is that we don't have enough room in storage. So if we go to the oxygen tank, it is full. So oxygen generator, let's turn that off. So we may have enough time. Uh, that's, that's something to note. If you're trying to figure this out, if your tank is full, um, it doesn't matter how much time you give the vent, it has nowhere to put the oxygen. So we could have given these an hour, and it probably still would have had uh, oxygen flying out. So let's, let's give... Uh, give the the tank. Uh, we turned off the generator, so no more no more oxygen is being created, and now the uh, the tank should be uh, able to empty some once we pressurize. Oh, and actually, uh, another thing to note: the way that this works. So here we go. This is pressurizing, and now it's venting. Um, the way that this works is that one door is always going to be open. 
there is a way to set this up so that both doors end up closing, but that, um, at least at least from what the Arclight Drive Yards engineers have said, makes things far more complicated. And uh, doing it this way, you always have one door closed, and the, the airlock works uh, exactly as an airlock should. It doesn't take a huge amount of materials and a terribly complex setup of timers and or sensors. Um, you may need additional sensors uh, and timers, possibly, to, to get it to work where both close. So now that we can see this is, uh, this is venting some oxygen, we may end up having enough room in our oxygen tank. Oh, it's, it's venting, but very slowly. There isn't a way to manually vent this, because once... Once the air vent realizes, it seems like, that, that it's not actually pressurizing anything, it doesn't just continuously vent O2 from the tank. So it's only going to vent O2 by filling a volume when it thinks it's sealed. And then, and then you'd vent that volume. But the vent actually has like an automatic stop. So you can see that just blew out. So this is the general idea, though. Um, Whatever way you come in, so now actually to illustrate that that this this works, um, I've been going back and forth the way that you would if you were just one person going in and out. Now I'm another person. This would uh, illustrate another person coming from inside the station after someone else has gone out, and it works this way too, because this sensor starts, which closes the door on the other side. You can see that's already closed. Then gives us time to pressurize and opens, and we're seeing that depressurize every time because n n uh, neither side of this. Uh, airlock is actually in a pressurized area. So if we if we had the rest of the station built back here, that would be sealed. And so when that door opens, it would be opening into an already pressurized area, whereas now it's opening either way into a depressurized area, which is why you see oxygen still still coming out. So once we get the rest of the station built around that, you'll be able to see that illustrated a little bit better. But now you, you can see what whatever direction I go in or out, uh, the system always works, and that has to do with, uh, like I was saying, not having the on-off uh, deal set up. Um, the way that these timers are set up, it doesn't matter what direction you come uh, in or out or how many people are going one way or another. It should always remain um, in sync and working correctly. So hope this was uh, was interesting and maybe, maybe helped some people with uh, getting ideas of how to build a timing system. Um, and uh, I'd like to like to thank the engineers at ArcLight Drive Yards for uh, giving me a hand with this, and uh, I hope it was useful to you guys. So, until next time, thanks for watching.